Theorem two in Young's geometry is a lemma that a student posed, and it's really helpful sometimes to be able to say that, say I have a point P in Young's geometry, I know there's a line somewhere in the geometry that does not contain it. So this has a couple of purposes. First of all, I'm showing you what I consider to be a legitimate dynamic geometry proof, um, and I'll give you a couple of tips about how I created it at the end. So let's go through the proof. Well. I need to start with an arbitrary point, right? It says for any point P in Young's geometry. So the first thing I start off with is let this point be given, uh, be arbitrary, right? And that's from the given. And why is it possible? Well, we know there are at least four points in this geometry, so we're good to go on that score. So the next step <clears throat> is to construct arbitrary points A, B, C, D. And this is due to Young's geometry. Um, theorem 1. Theorem 1 says there are at least four points in the geometry. So notice that when I click this, right, the, uh, the whole point of doing these checkboxes is so that the important thing I'm constructing appears at the same time the text that says constructed appears. Now I'm going to construct a line between the points P and A. Now, why can I do that? Well, that's axiom four. Let's actually switch over to Young's geometry and look. It says that on any two distinct points, there's exactly one line. Okay, so there's no confusion here about what I'm doing. Right, I just decided, hey, pick the point A and pick the point P and put a line between them. Okay. Why are we doing that? Well, we know that there are most three lines, uh, three points on any given line. So maybe B could be on here, or maybe C could be on here, but they both can't be on there. All right, so it was important to, cr to construct this line just for that purpose, right? So that I have a line to sort of compare against. And so the next step here is, well, hey, either B or C is not in the line PA, right? It's not an element of. So we've got some set theory going on here. And I'll just say this up front. Most modern geometric axiomatic systems include set theory basics uh, so that points are members of sets called lines and lines are members of sets called planes. And anyway, so, and points are, are subsets of things like planes so or a a group of points right a set of points could be um, a subset of a plane so so the set theory uh, notation is intentional and we're saying that hey either one of these two elements is actually not in there right um, why well by Young's geometry axiom two so you can do this either way you can do the parentheses at the end to state your justification. In theorem proving, that's also called a warrant, right? It's the warrant that certifies the statement is true. And I don't mind if, I tend to do this a lot, but it's perfectly uh, legitimate to say by Young's geometry axiom two, this must be true. And then our final step is without loss of generality assume that it's B that's not on the line. All right, so I know that B is not in the line AP. So C could be, right? C might be over here, we don't know. But we know that B isn't. And what does um, axiom five say? Well, axiom five says that basically is a parallel condition, right? That for um, any point P not on L, there exists exactly one line. Um, on P that doesn't contain any points of L. All right, so let's jump back here and see if we can match this up, right? So I have a line L and I have a point and it says P, but I have a point that's not on it, which is this one. So I know that there is some line through B that is parallel to the line PA, exactly one. Okay, so therefore, right, what do I have? I started with P, 
and I found this line that doesn't contain P, right? How do I know it doesn't contain P? Well, it's parallel to the line L, the line PA, so there's no way. There's no way it could be, uh, it could contain P because it's parallel to a line that P is within. All right, so just a couple quick things here before we're done. Um, so this, um, Pull this up so so I'm using the backslash in that gives me element of right so backslash in right here right this code backslash I in and this one is backslash not in All right, this one I didn't mention in the other video. This one is backslash parallel. I'm not gonna spell that out. You just spell out the word. You just do backslash parallel. And um, then let me also show you one more thing uh, because you notice how I got my, um, I typed text here and the uh, dollar sign math and I got it all to appear on the same line. Oh, what did I do? Well, I don't know. GeoGebra is a little wacky. I don't love it for this reason but here's what's going on um, when you click in here you'll see that I am saying text right so if I put all the text that's actual text in a inside a text command right so backslash text and then open curly brackets and then close curly brackets and by the way this is an important space here because it actually is keeping the space between the object and the text and this is another important space right here. But what I'm doing is I'm using these text areas to type my actual text. And where I'm not inside one of those text uh, blocks, that's going to display as dollar sign math. Okay, so it gets a little complicated with something down here. I'll let you take a look at it. Uh, it's a bit annoying. I'll show that in just a second, but let me mention this one. So a lot of people use an open square to, instead of QED to say, hey, my proof is done. Um, and that is just backslash square. I don't even know if I can uh, manage to write the word square <laughs> with my cursor, but there you go. So that's this symbol right there. So look, this is ugly, right? But you can see that I'm using the text for all of this, right? And then I have the B not in the line segment PA. And then I have text. This, these are giving me, um, whoa, that I want to hit cancel because that was getting ready to mess up everything. I accidentally grabbed something and dragged it. So the double um, backslashes are a hard return that's gonna that's gonna force the line to end and start a new line so you'll see that the yg axiom 5 is the first thing that starts the next line and then there's another hard return here so that the square is below and i'll just throw this out this is a little advanced stuff pro tip you don't need to know this to have really beautiful geogebra equations but I'm using this H space, that's horizontal space. And so that squares moving over 12 and a half centimeters. Now it's not actually 12 and a half centimeters, which is like the width of the entire screen almost, um, but it's scaled somehow. And I just kept adding, I started with like four and it was way over to the left. And I just kept adding some horizontal space in there until it looked nice to me. Um, and again, people can do this their own way. You, uh, it is possible just to create a little square inside a text box and put it over here um, because the lines of those text boxes don't show up. Let me uh, get, well, that, I think that's it for now. So that's what I mean by a dynamic GeoGebra proof, right? And it should be really clear without any explanation what you're doing as you go through, right? And you don't have to name these one, two, three, it just helps. Sometimes there will be subparts of proofs. So you'll see people with a two and then a two A and then a two B and then a two C and then a three, and that's fine. Um, but that's what we mean by dynamic GeoGebra proof. And that's why Young's theorem, Young's geometry theorem two is true.